Hey, today I'm going to show you how to bake a discard sourdough starter bread. When you bake with sourdough, you end up feeding your sourdough several times and you're not always able to use all of the sourdough that you created. So some I just store in a jar in the fridge and then from time to time I'm using it to bake a bread. Some throw it away and I find that to be a waste. That's my discard starter jar and that's the sourdough that I already made. And I'm going to be using 90% uh, of the discard starter. I'm going to be placing everything inside of this loaf pan in the end. And then I'm going to be using 10% of um, starter. So yeah, you need a loaf pan for this because it's going to be a very, very um, sticky dough. You need to spray it with a little bit. You could also use olive oil. And I'm going to be adding some wheat seeds. I'm going to grind, grind them in just a little bit. They will be part of the dough. I feel that this adds a lot of nice, excellent taste. So the overall recipe is 350 grams of discard starter, 50 grams of fresh starter, 200 grams of full grain flour, and another 200 grams of water. So we're ending up at around 400 grams of flour in total and then 400 grams of water. So it's equal parts of both. Then you add 2% salt, which would be 8 grams of salt in this case, and that's basically it. I'm adding some additional seeds here because I just like the taste of them. I'm grinding them real quick. I'm not going to completely grind them just a tiny bit. I like the texture. Let's get started with the actual mixing then. I'm going to be adding all of the ingredients and you will see how much of a liquid though this is. You can't knead it at all, it's just way too liquid. But the high hydration though has a lot of water and this water evaporates during baking. And this means you're going to have a nice open crumb for something which normally shouldn't have an open crumb. Because the scarred starter is very, very sour. The sour has been fermented for a long time and it does not allow you to form a nice gluten network anymore. And I feel this is a really great way of combining both worlds and it's going to taste amazing. Now I'm adding my fresh starter. You could also just use this card starter and then just wait a little bit longer for the fermentation to complete. In my case, I wanted to eat the dough already in the night and that's why I've been using a little bit more of fresh starter. Assuming you used 400 grams in total, you want to add half of it as fresh flour again. So in this case, that would be 200 grams of flour and 200 grams of water. I'm going to be using warm water because I want to speed up the fermentation a little bit. The fresh flour also allows to that more, more yeast and more bacteria can create more acid and they can create more gas and they need some food. So this is going to reactivate your dough. You should always have a little bit of fresh flour when baking a discard starter. Add the water and now then now you can start stirring. Um, oh. Of course, we are missing the salt. So that's eight grams of salt, which we are going to be adding. And then start stirring it. And you can just start stirring it with the spoon because the dough is so liquid, there's really no need to do any sort of kneading. It's way too liquid. We are looking at 100% hydration though. Adding in the seeds. I've been using 200 grams of seeds and let's start stirring. Stir until everything has been incorporated evenly until you see no more chunks of flour. But typically this should only take you a minute or so. It should be a fairly smooth process. I'm just speeding things up a little bit so you don't get too bored. That's what I like about this bread. 
because it's so liquid it's just so easy to make and the high hydration is really going to make a nice open crumb i'm going to show you later but you will need the loaf pan so i'm covering this and i'm going to let this ferment for five -ish hours but this really depends on you how sour you want your bread to be now don't even try kneading or touching this dough with your hands i'm just going to use a spatula and i'm going to pour that dough into the loaf pan but first we need to add a little bit of fat to the loaf pan we don't want the dough to stick to it i'm using some non-fat spray a non-stick spray but you could definitely also just use some olive oil to coat your loaf pan i'm adding some oats at the bottom i just like this it gives a nice rustic look to it you don't have to do this but i just like it so i'm adding oats everywhere I'm stirring the loaf pan a little bit and the excess loaves uh, the excess oats, I'm not throwing them away. I'm going to keep them for later and I'm going to sprinkle them back on top of the loaf. Now, next step, we are going to add our dough. And using this spatula, just take out the dough and put it into the loaf pan. The fermentation, the bulk fermentation time depends a little bit. It's very hard to have a reproducible environment because the activity of your starter discard is always so different. And also it doesn't really double in size. So I do this mostly based on feeling, but I think five hours should be a good ballpark figure for you. But you can definitely try. It's probably going to be a little bit different. And again, the only thing you get with longer fermentation time is you get a more open uh, open crump because you have more gas inside but you will regardless get an open crump because you have a lot of water inside which is going to evaporate during the baking process i'm just spreading it a little bit evenly but don't worry gravity is going to take care of everything else yep taking some of the leftover oats and just sprinkling them on top and as the dough rises a little bit, it's going to probably rise two centimeters. The oats are going to be nicely incorporated in the upper layer of the crust. And now let's put it into a plastic bag and let it proof. And then we're going to bake it after around three hours or so. We're going to bake it in the oven with a little bit of steam added. And there it is. After around 45 minutes of baking in the oven, half the time with additional steam and half the time without, this is how our discard starter bread looks like. What you can also do to upgrade the hydration a little bit inside of your oven, cover it with aluminum foil, but you don't have to do this. And look at this. This is a nice looking sandwich loaf. And I'm glad it also came out of the loaf pan that well. Let's have a look at the crumb. and there we go nice open crumb you can see the pockets of air towards the top of the loaf that's because we didn't have that much hydration during the bake that's typically what happens but in general an awesome looking crumb a nice crust uh, and i'm very happy with how this turned out and it's so much better than just throwing away your discard starter i really like to bake this kind of bread we germans love it and another close-up of the crump thank you very much for 